I'm Ken Rockwell. Let's take a look at Sony's newest 35mm f1.4 GM lens, but let's first take a look at some of the pictures I can make with it. Of course, this lens is sharp. Every lens is sharp. This is shot on a Sony A1 in VV2 creative look with plus 9 saturation at f11 at 1 100th at auto ISO 100. And it is exactly as it came out of the camera. And I'm zooming in here on the still images in my video editing software. As you can see a little bit about how sharp it is. In other words, if I zoom in three or four times, imagine an image three or four times the size of your screen. It would be the whole image. Here's a Porsche dealer. This was shot on the A1 in VV Creative Look with plus 9 saturation at f8 at 1 320th at ISO 100. And I corrected the perspective in Photoshop CS6, which is my 10-year-old and perfectly good version of Photoshop. I love the colors of the A1. This is f11 at 1 200th with the 35 millimeter. This is exactly as it came out of the camera. And again, I'm zooming in using my video editing software on the still image file. This is at f8 at 1 400th at auto ISO 100. Again, all these shots are the vivid mode or maybe vivid 2 mode on the A1 with plus 9 saturation to bump up the colors the way I like them. This shot is at f8 at 1 500th at auto ISO 100 with plus 2 thirds of a stop exposure compensation. And again, this is exactly what came out of the camera. This metallic blue Cadillac, all the same settings again, F8 at a 320th at auto ISO 100. This is shot in the square crop mode of the A1. This is exactly as it came out of the camera. And of course, since you're looking at video here, it's 16 by 9, the squares didn't really work well. I shoot in square a lot because it works well with my Hasselblads. When I put up a gallery show or a museum show for doing video, this is not the best shape. But of course, as you zoom in, you can see all the detail this lens has. Works great close up. This is at f4 to throw some of the background out of focus at a 320th with plus two thirds of a stop exposure compensation. This is my lunch on the 1st of May, 2021. This is handheld at f11 at a 40th, and it doesn't show the lens in its best light because this is actually with the A1 all the way bumped up to ISO 4000 which significantly softens the image, but it's still pretty sharp. This is another square crop of a death storm. This is at F9 at 1 640th at ISO 100 on the Sony A1. This is a sunset on the night of the death storm. This is at 5.6 at an 80th at ISO 50. I cranked it down to get rid of some of the noise. And admittedly, this is with the VV2 creative look mode, which has a little more sharpening than I would like for my still shots. But here on video, when it's recombobulated to fit the video, probably looks great. This is the power of stone shot down in Mexico City, Mexico. I'm not sure, but this building, all the chunks of concrete are falling off of it, and I'm hoping I was not below it when it fell off. This is at F8 at a 640th at ISO 100 on the Sony A1. Is this sharp? <laughs> Here's Hawaii. This is a 5.6 and a 320th at auto ISO 100. And as I zoom in here, again, it's zooming in on the still image. This was actually shot in the 4x3 crop mode of the A1, which again, it's suboptimal for showing here on 16x9. But as I zoom in, it fills the screen. This ancient deliveries only sign was probably 50 or 60 years old, hand painted sign. This is at F8 at a 500th at auto ISO 100. And this lens is so sharp, you can see every pore in the wood. And of course, the brushy plant is in front of the sign, so that's not supposed to be in focus. This new Sony GM lens is a smaller, lighter, and less expensive version of the Zeiss lens that Sony used to sell and now currently has on closeout. <laughs> you can buy the Zeiss lens for less money. It's bigger, heavier. doesn't feel as well made. It has a metal vanity shell, and it just has a metal shell on the outside just for show, and the insides are all plastic. This lens is all plastic on the outside, and it actually feels a lot tougher. This lens is also sharper. When shot at f1.4, it's sharper in the corners. 
than the old Zeiss lens. So I forget about the old Zeiss lens. It's it's kind of a dog. So <laughs> that's because it's, it's it's a big lens. For many or most full-time career professional photographers, 35 millimeter f1.4 lenses have been the standard normal lens for these photographers ever since they first came out in 1961. Here's the world's first 35 millimeter f1.4. This is made by Leica. It was made from 1961 until 1995. You can see a significant difference. This Leica lens is also for mirrorless cameras, mirrorless 35 millimeter film cameras, known as rangefinder cameras. And the size is, is, is insanely different. And guess what? You can shoot this little Leica lens, and there's a full review of it on my website. You can follow the link to it. This little Leica lens will also work on all your Sony full-frame cameras. All it takes is a Leica M, the Sony NEX or Sony E adapter, and you're good to go. But uh, here's the secret. This lens, although it is a Leica, it is nowhere near as sharp. <laughs> I shot at f1.4 as the new Sony lens is. This has got a 10-bladed diaphragm. The Sony lens has a superior 11 bladed diaphragm because the 11 bladed diaphragm makes 22 point sun stars. We'll see that later. Newer in history was after the Leica lens, Nikon came out with this lens in 1969. as the same optics as a the lens they still sell today. They've made it from 1969 through today in 2021. Nikon's 35 millimeter 1.4 AIS, which again, you can adapt to Sony, but don't do that. It's a royal pain with manual diaphragms and so forth. But this lens was a standard of many full-time pro news photographers for decades and decades and decades. Nikon makes a plastic version today, which is bigger and more expensive. And technically, it may be a little sharper. For Canon, it is also smaller than this big Sony lens. And it's a fantastic performer, but it works on Canon cameras. You could, of course, adapt it to Sony. I don't believe in adapters because things always get mucked up. Also, the Canon lens is genuine made in, made in Japan, high-quality lens. It's not offshore to Thailand like this new Sony lens. The Nikon lens, also genuine made in Japan lens, is smaller than this Canon lens. And <laughs> I'm running out of hands here, but I know you guys love to see this stuff. And the original Leica lens, which, again, is a mirrorless lens, is even smaller than that. What you get with this giant Sony lens is, is it works fluently with Sony's cameras. It's fully automatic exposure, automatic aperture control, automatic focus, full EXIF data and everything else. You also have a legitimate diaphragm here for manual use, which I love. What's new in this lens compared to the Zeiss lens is, as well as being sharper in the corners wide open, it's smaller, lighter, it has an 11-bladed versus a nine-bladed diaphragm. This is a plastic filter thread versus the metal filter thread of the Zeiss lens. This comes with a much nicer padded case. It comes with a tougher locking hood with a rubber bumper on the front, and it's also about, historically, it was about $200 less expensive. What's good about this lens is, yes, it's ultra sharp. It has no visible distortion. It's tough. It comes with a case and a hood, and it has this programmable focus lock button. By programmable focus lock button, I mean it defaults to a focus lock button, but you can use your camera, and every camera will be different to do different things with your button. The bad news is it's not made domestically in Japan. It is offshore to Thailand to uh, keep the profits high for Sony in Japan. And the filter threads are plastic. But other than that, this is a great little lens. It's about the size of a, about a softball or a baseball. It's good for throwing. It's nice and dense, but it's, it's not that dense. What's missing is it has absolutely no image stabilization. Yes, Sony's marketing people will try to get you to believe you can use it with the in-camera stabilization, and you can, but it doesn't work anywhere near as well as if the lens actually had optical stabilization. But guess what? I can't recall any lenses that have optical stabilization in the 35mm f1.4. What does it work on? It works on all the Sony E-mount cameras. There's no question about that. It will not work on Sony's completely obsolete DSLRs, which are the A-series cameras, like the A99 and those old beasts. Good riddance to them. Technically, it has 14 elements in 10 groups. It has one ED, extra low dispersion element. It has two extreme aspherical elements. And what that means is Sony actually has a secret process. They won't tell anybody how they do it, but they're able to make aspherical lenses more precisely and more smoothly than anybody else. So instead of getting these strange onion ring style bokeh effects from the, the finite precision with which other manufacturers can build their aspherical lenses, it actually gives natural looking bokeh, which is actually something even Leica hasn't been able to do yet. It's internal focusing. It has 11 rounded blades for its diaphragm. It has a 67 millimeter front filter thread. Its close focus is nine tenths of a foot or a quarter of a meter. Maximum repo ratio is about one to four, and we'll see that later. It actually weighs 18.445 ounces or 523.0 grams. Performance-wise, autofocus is fast and sure. Sony has that down, no questions asked. Manual focusing is entirely electronic, although it seems to have this nice reassuring manual focus ring. Typical for the Sony system, it only works half the time. If you put your camera in DMF mode after the camera focuses in the focus and lock mode, AFS mode, then you'll have manual focus, or if you flip the switch to manual focus, it will respond. Otherwise, it totally ignores you. It's not the way I would like it, which would be a mechanical focus ring that always just takes charge and focuses your lens. 
Focus breathing, which is the image from the lens changing size as you focus in and out, which is only important to people trying to make motion pictures with this thing. The image grows as you focus more closely. Bokeh. Bokeh is reasonable. It's not great, and it's certainly not awful. Here it is at f1.4. Here it is at f2.8. This is at f5.6. And this is at f11. Obviously, if you want things as far out of focus as possible, shoot at f1.4 and get as close as possible. For distortion, it has no visible distortion. It has a vanishing amount, and I have the correction coefficients for use in Photoshop if you want in the written review at kenrockwell.com, with links are in my description. But for any intents and purposes, unless you're you know looking at it at 300% on your screen and holding a ruler next to it, no, uh, there's no visible distortion. This building has more distortion in it than, than the lens does. Ergonomically, it's straight ahead. Focus ring, focus lock. These are right where your thumb wants them. This ring is a little stiff. This aperture selection ring so it really takes a strong single finger to move it or ideally you want to use two fingers to move it around it has a click remover turn that off and now you can change this smoothly which i guess if you're trying to use this to make movies smoothly although it does stop at 16 and then it'll click at a there's no significant fall off all of your cameras will correct it automatically which is what we're seeing here this is at f1.4 and as we stop down to f2 and f2.8 and therefore, it's not significant. On this gray field here, you can see a lot more fall off than you'd ever see in an actual photograph. Now, of course, if you're silly enough to turn off the automatic correction and then go deliberately looking for it, well, yeah, then you'll see some. This is as bad as it gets. This is at f1.4, the correction turned off. Now at f2, f2.8, and f4. You don't need any thin filters with this. I can stack quite a stack of filters about this tall in the front and get no vignetting at all on full frame, so you're good to go. Flare and ghosts are minimal. I'll show those at Sunstars. Lateral color fringes are non-existent. Your camera corrects for them automatically. And even on my 50 megapixel Sony A1, if I turn off the automatic lateral color correction and then deliberately go looking for lateral color, well, then and only then, there's a microscopic subpixel amount of blue and pink, but it's not significant. So that's fantastic. But that's what we expect. Lenses have gotten better and better over time. This lens is no exception. So its performance is exceptional. Macro performance is pretty good. This is as close as it gets on full frame. Of course, if you're shooting on an APS-C camera, it'll get what appears to be even closer. And I'm zooming in here on the still image that's shot. It's not zooming the lens. It's just zooming in on the image to see for detail. It holds up pretty darn well at f1.4. I'm impressed. Of course, if you don't have absolutely flawlessly perfect focus, it's not going to be sharp. But that's the case with every lens. If we stop it down to f8 now, this is at the close focus distance on full frame at f8 on my Sony A1. Of course, it's ultra sharp, but every lens is ultra sharp at f8. Mechanically, it's well made, but it's not metal. And for an old timer like me, I feel ripped off when stuff is made out of plastic. The filter thread's plastic. The hood mount is plastic. This is just a trim ring, which is anodized aluminum, doesn't do anything. This ring is rubberized plastic. This section of the barrel is plastic. This ring is metal. This rear barrel is all plastic. The mount is metal. The internals, they're a mixture of both metal and plastic. And you know what is nice, though? Nice talks. You'll never notice it. But this ring here, this identity ring, is actually laser engraved, and it is metal with the, the lens's pertinent information on it. The serial number is laser engraved in black on black on the bottom. Now, this is actually an improvement. Sony used to be, because they come from a consumer electronics attitude, where stuff is installed and left alone for five years. They don't understand that this stuff is handled all day every day they used to use stickers this is actually engraved which is good too often sony uses stickers with a printed serial number on them and that's really bad because as you use the lens you're going to wear that off so this actually being engraved very lightly that will probably last about as long as the lens can be expected to last so that's a good sign that's actually an improvement noises when shaken when you shake this thing the focus group does not lock down so there's a focus group that flops around i'm not sure if you can hear it that is perfectly normal Spherochromatism are things that are out of focus having color fringes around them. Well, this has a normal amount of spherochromatism, which is as expected for a super fast lens. The background may get some green fringes on it if they're out of focus, and the foreground may get some magenta fringes on them if they're out of focus. And this is perfectly normal and actually helps the bokeh when you've got green stuff in the background. It softens it even better. So that's, that's a good thing, but this is typical. Here's the sun stars.
Now, the vertical smear you see is called interline transfer smear. That's an artifact of the camera, my Sony A1, so ignore that. Remember, this is an extreme test. This is the sun shining straight into the lens, unshielded and undisturbed by any of the branches of the palm tree. And then I'm exposing for the bottom of this palm tree, which is like exposing five or... <laughs> Five more stops than you would in daylight, and then deliberately having all this darkness against which you can see any flare or ghosts, so I can show you some sun stars. So ignore that. And as we stop down, this is typical. What happens is there are so many blades to this diaphragm that the sun stars have numerous. They're 22-pointed sun stars, but they aren't that strong. So it all depends on the situation in which you're shooting. And also ignore the rainbow <laughs> rainbow effects. That's another artifact of the sensor, not the lens. But this lens does quite well. Used properly... And in the right conditions, for instance, shot at night with points of light uh, off in the distance, you will get beautiful 22-pointed sun stars. There's really no other way to get these other than using a lens which has 11 diaphragm blades. It's not going to work with any teleconverters. Why? Because the back element is right up on the back of the lens. Teleconverters all poke into the back of the lens. At least Sony's own teleconverters need to poke into the back of the lens, so it's not going to happen here. And, you know... Nobody, nobody serious uses teleconverters on 35 millimeter lens. What are you going to do? Make it a 70 millimeter of 2.8? I don't think so. That went away back in the 70s. If we compare it to the Zeiss 35 millimeter of 1.4, here's some specifications on it. And that's it. Recommendations? The 35mm f1.4 has been a staple in every pro photographer's bag for decades, although with the advent of zoom lenses in the 1980s, it became less popular. But certainly back in the days of film, we always had a 35 1.4 because it actually works in much lower light than a 50 1.4. Why is that? Simple. Because you can shoot at a slower shutter speed with a 35 than you can with a 50. You also get more in focus at f1.4 with a 35 than you do with a 50 1.4. So actually, my go-to ultra-low light lens is always my 35 1.4. With my Canons, with my Leicas, with everything. This is a special lens, though. For most people, your regular lens, your regular zoom is all you need. But if you're the kind of guy that appreciates the best and deserves the best, by all means, this is a great lens. The price is not unreasonable for what you get. It's about $1,400 at introduction. I think it's a great buy for that if you're someone who deserves and <laughs> appreciates the best. And that's it. Thanks again for watching Ken Rockwell and KenRockwell.com. And if you follow the links, you can get to my written review, which will give you even more explicit details. Thanks again for watching KenRockwell.com.